Hi, my name is Andrew Manthan. I'm here today to talk to you about Chaos Engine. Chaos Engine is an application we've developed in-house to help facilitate chaos experiments on our application stacks. I'm just going to run right into a demo and go over some of our key design philosophies for it while we do that. So I've already got an instance of Chaos Engine running here. Uh, it is pointed at a Kubernetes cluster, which you can see I'm running kubectl get pods on in a loop down here. And if I go and just quickly hit the platform API of our Chaos Engine instance, you'll see that I get a full roster of all six pods. So one thing to note with Chaos Engine is, well, right now I have it pointed at this one Kubernetes cluster only, it's possible to point it at multiple layers of your application at the same time. So if this Kubernetes cluster is running against, uh, or running backed by an EC2 instance uh, group, then we can also perform experiments directly on the EC2 layer. If it's got a database in Amazon RDS, we can perform experiments on those RDS databases simultaneously. It's not limited to just one scope of your application stack at any specific time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call our experiment API here to actually have it create an experiment. Uh, normally, Chaos Engine, when it's running in its automated mode, uh, randomly selects times for uh, experiments based on uh, based on how aggressive you set it against your platform, as well as based on holiday schedules so that it reduces the impact of uh, pager alerts from chaos-based experiments. Uh, when I run this API, it's going to randomly select uh, a subsection of pods from our roster here. Uh, there is some logic in place for it to uh, not select all three of a single replica set here. So uh, we ensure that we minimize our blast radius. That way we're not going to take out an entire instance of the application. Uh, but of course it can take out two. And if, again, we're running this on the EC2 layer, it is possible that we would take out an EC2 instance that uh, because of bad scheduling on the Kubernetes part, uh, it's holding all three instances of one application. Uh, when I run this, what we should see is we get an experiment here. Uh, it's created against a single container. So we're going to see against this Nginx container, it's running an experiment called build disk. Uh, that experiment, as it's pretty aptly named, is going to fill up the free disk space on this Kubernetes pod. Uh, it's doing so using the Kubernetes exec API. Uh, in other layers, it would do a similar experiment using SSH. Uh, it also has support for running experiments directly with the uh, APIs of the platform. So what we already see here is, so we ran this on an Nginx container, but we actually saw multiple application instances get evicted. So these are the kinds of things we're looking for in chaos engineering. We're trying to find badly configured uh, deployments that don't have your resources set up properly. So in this case, my very badly constructed uh, deployment here didn't have uh, ephemeral storage limits. So it ended up taking out multiple other pods when it had a bug causing runaway disk space issues. Uh, and we'll see here that Chaos Engine is waiting and making sure that everything in the pod is up and running again after the fact and then considering the experiment closed. Uh, another key design philosophy we put in here is that we do not want to limit this just to uh, a few select platform levels. So we've actually designed the architecture in this in such a way that it is very easy to add a new platform layer uh, into the code. I'm currently writing one for Google Cloud at the moment, and it's taken me about two weeks to get it all up and running with all the, uh, all the API calls from the SDK, and that should be ready soon. If someone wanted to go and pick up another layer and write one for Azure or VMware or ESXi or any other cloud-based technology that is, uh, that's used to create application stacks, uh, it's all extensible from there. Uh, we want to keep this as vendor agnostic as possible. And then, of course, finally, the, uh, the last thing that we've put in place is a security layer. So it's turned off for the demo environment, but there is a security layer built into this application. Uh, it's also open source, so there is the capability for many eyes on it to find out exactly what is happening with the application. Uh, we didn't like the idea of having a closed source application that had the credentials that are needed to perform these kinds of experiments on our clusters. Uh, if we're going to give it basically root level access, we want to be able to know exactly what is running. Thank you for your time.